Well, good morning, everybody. My notes up here. I'm Jan Erickson from Stepping Aside, and welcome to Somewhat Daily Tarot and Rune for the second day of April 2020. Well, I got the monthly tarot up. I just posted it actually this morning. I don't know what happened. I just, I guess I forgot. I don't know. I worked on it. I got it done. I still have to do the monthly geomancy thing today, so I'm going to do that here after I, I do the correspondences for today. I'll get that up too. Um, so take a look at, at that if you like. I'm probably going to cross post it over onto Patreon and also onto uh, Medium. So if you want to look at it there too, you could. Um, let's see. Well, I hope everybody's doing pretty well today. I, I hope everyone's staying in and staying away from people and, you know, trying to self-isolate and, and stay as safe as possible during this. Um, we're going to have to be going out this weekend and, uh, so we'll go out with a mask and gloves and, and everything. I think you're going to see the CDC um, finally say that, that, yeah, we need to be doing that. And I don't understand why they didn't before. That That's odd. So I I could I just, every time we go out, we wear a mask. So um, I just think that with things being asymptomatic, I, I think it you don't know if you're sick. You don't know if someone else is sick. So I think it just makes sense to take those that level of precaution if you can. I've been making masks, and and uh, I think I have enough now. But I have some a little bit more pillowcase material I can I can butcher up and make masks with. But um, I think we'll we'll just kind of sit tight with what we have right now, and because uh, we can wash one and then keep one. Because we're not going to go out but every two weeks anyway. So if that, so we'll see. We'll just see how it goes. But. I'm just not willing to take any chances. I'm just not. Not at my age. So anyway, I hope all of you are staying as safe as possible and taking the precautions you need to take. And uh, we'll get through this together. Uh, the moon is in still third house cancer. So third house just because of the time. Cancer because it is. I don't know if it moves today, but uh, I didn't check that part. I only looked at it for just now. Uh, we're still, you know, home and family is still the focus, obviously. Um, we're going to be nurturing self and others. Uh, one thing, though, that, that kind of struck me, uh, there's a sextile with Venus where it's recommending expressing uh, gratitude today. Um, there's also an opposition between the moon and Saturn uh, where we might experience a little frustration with others. You know, as we're home with one another, you know, for an extended period of time with all the uncertainty, tensions build. And... I think that it makes sense to um, give to get, basically, uh, expressing gratitude for the support that each one of you gives one another, um, staying in that type of, of resonance, you know, one of grace and gratitude, uh, participating, not expecting everyone in the house to pick up all the, the, the garbage in the house and, and you don't, you know, to clean up the house and you don't do it too well you know, that could create some tension. So make sure everybody's pulling their weight and, and contributing as best they can to a shared endeavor. And uh, sometimes that's all it takes to settle, settle tensions down and resentments down. So, uh, and, and, you're, and you're likely going to experience that from time to time here going forward because uh, we don't know how long this is going to need to happen and, and how long we need to, to remain away from everyone. Uh so again, you know, stay connected with other people and check in with people that you maybe have been estranged from, uh, especially if it's older people in your life, they're, they're likely very worried. And, and uh, I know yesterday was a difficult one for me that my fears got the better of me and, and I was very upset. Uh, let's see, uh, Sun, 12th house, Aries, again, um, balance self-assertion with reflection. You know, you're going to want, you're feeling the urge to go do something. Well, <clears throat> got to consider the, the, the reasons why you're not, you know, you're not stuck at home. You're safe at home. There's a very big difference. Um, focus on what's ever realistic right now. The semi-square between the sun and uh, uh, Venus or the sun and, and Venus is still in effect. So, you know, focus on the positive and what can actually happen now. Let's see if anything changed from yesterday. Uh, Venus trying Saturn partnership is favored. Again, that's probably also going to support what's going on between the moon and Venus and the moon and Saturn. Was it Saturn? Yeah. Um, 
yeah, Mars conjunct Saturn patience is necessary now. So, you know, I, I think that that's, again, it's just a function of the situation and we have to get, get with it any, get, get through it any way we can. Let's see what else changed from yesterday. Saturn's in the same place. So is Uranus still semi square. Uh, Neptune guard against deception or the long played con. You know, it's hard when you need to know facts and, you know, the government doesn't seem to want to give it to you. So you're going to have to listen to the medical professionals and to the governors that are listening to the medical professionals and, and, uh, uh, the CDC, listen to the CDC. Let's see. Hopefully you live in a state where the state's on lockdown. <laughs> if you don't, I don't know. I don't know. I'm sorry about that. You're just going to have to lock yourself down. You're going to have to be more sensible than your governor. I mean, that's really what it's going to come down to. Save yourself. Don't listen to that governor. If they're not telling you to stay in, there's something wrong with them. Don't, don't listen to them. Uh, you need to be listening to the medical professionals here. They're telling us what we need to know. And if we would just do what they say, we'd get through this a whole lot simpler. You know, if you, if you, because that's what, that's what it took back in 1918 in the, in the Spanish pandemic, that the Spanish flu, what they found is if they all just stopped in, and, and, and hunkered down in place, the virus had nowhere to go. If you're not with anybody, you can't transmit it to anybody. And then it just sort of, you know, dies out or something until the next time it rears its ugly head. You know, and maybe it won't, you know, or maybe they can get the vaccine together and quickly enough to inoculate people who didn't get it. You know, and, and so I think that, that but, but what you want to do is you want to give it no room to move. And that's all, that's all the, the professionals are saying here. And if we would just listen to that, we could get through this much, much more quickly. I mean, if they're worried about the impact to the, to the country and to the economy, then hunker down for a month, right? <laughs> I, I know that it, it's not something we're accustomed to, but it's something we're going to have to get accustomed to. Because this may not be the only one we face going forward. You know, it, what if it isn't? What if this is something that's going to start happening? We need to learn how to deal with that. And if it means that we have to take time out to let the virus subside, then that's what we need to do. If, and to give it no purchase anywhere else, then that's what we have to do. So we don't know what life's going to be like going forward. This may be an anomaly and we're going to be fine going forward. We're not going to have to deal with stuff like this. But what if we do? Don't we want to pay attention now and learn the technique now and how we get through it now? So for the future, if there if there's more of this that we can do it and we know what to do, everything's in place. We're not sitting around waiting for a government to sort of re remember to protect us. You know, instead, instead, I, I saw that what he did was he let the, 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 the uh, contract go and, and they weren't. They weren't servicing the ventilators in the national stockpile. That's why they don't work. So here we are. We need them. And they didn't take care of business. But that's, when you, that's what happens when you get amateurs in the government who fire everybody that knows what they're doing. And they leave fools in place who know nothing. Oh, but we drained the swamp, didn't we? Yeah. No, we didn't. That's not what that was. Oh, no. See, that's part of that long play con, that, that uh, Uranus uh, semi-square Neptune that we're dealing with. It's been a lot of deception, and we have to now understand that. You know, Chiron, uh, or I should say Pluto, not Chiron, uh, although Chiron's certainly involved. Uh, there, the space is going to open up to heal others. Uh, although, you know, fortunately, groups may, <laughs> groups at a distance, because for some people, groups are challenging. But right now, they're virtual, so you can always leave. And, uh, you know, it is what it is. But, you know, this may be a time where you can benefit others. Online, <laughs> please. But it's a time for transformation. Pluto in the ninth house Capricorn. See the truth of, of, of self during this time. We may need to wake up to what really matters, particularly if, We've been thinking in a direction that's not going to be sustainable or that has been, you know, preyed on by the uh, con artists in charge, you know. So 
I don't know. I, I, I think that, that this, is, this could be a time where we could really reevaluate things while we're trying to stay, stay safe and, and, and healthy and well. So we just got to try to see the bigger picture right now, as hard as that is. And uh, sometimes the cards help, and sometimes they simply describe what's going on. They don't really tell you a direction to go. It's just like, okay, yeah, this is what's happening today, you know. But anyway, let's go ahead and take our first three cards and see what we have for today. And if you haven't been here before, I do take the 13th card each time. Uh, I do it for randomness sake. And uh, we start out with the Two of Cups. Healing and reciprocity. Sort of what we've been talking about here, aren't we, astrologically? That's why I like to look at the astrology for the day before we start. Because astrology is, is inherent in tarot. It's also inherent in... Uh, any of the rune systems, uh, just in any divination, really, astrology factors in. It factors into witchcraft and work in magic. Um, where things are positioned, influence. And so that's why I've been doing that. I wasn't in the very beginning of this of this video series, but um, I don't know. I just started looking at it and, and uh, to see if there was anything that might be interesting. And, and uh there's a lot of stuff going on that particular day and it just sort of stuck and so now that's what I do when before I get started so oh a six of wands moving forward is shared purpose oh so after we heal and and come into balance with one another or with the self then we're able to again we're talking about about seeing what uh uh, seeing the truth of self during this time and uh, uh, need to w about really waking up to what matters and going forward in shared purpose. I don't know how else we get through this. I mean, I really don't. I mean, this business of being divided, man, what a, what a loser thing that is, isn't it? But yet the loser in charge, that's what he wants to do. He just wants to divide everybody, right? Divide and conquer is what the strategy is. If you get everybody at each other's throats, then, you know, they'll see him as the guy and the savior and all that. It's manipulation. It's not truth. It's not It's not because he's qualified, because he isn't. But yet, you know, that's what he's done. And, and obviously, being divided isn't going to work. It's not going to keep us safe, is it? We need to be on the same page here going forward. You know, we might we might have our own opinions. We might disagree about this and that. But right now, we need to be on the same page about this, this one thing. Right? We need to remember that each one of us is valuable and each one of us matters. And no, we aren't going to die for the economy. That's just not going to happen. We're going to try and save everyone. <laughs> Excuse me. Well, we have judgment. Let me get my tea here. Took my tincture this morning. It's allergy season here on the high desert. The juniper, you touch the juniper out there, and the the pollen just goes <laughs> it goes off in <coughs> in waves. So <coughs> into my into my elbow. I'm at home. <laughs> I'm not going out. So anyway. Allergies are tough this time of year because then you, it's like, oh my God, is it really that? You know, it's like, no, no fever, no dry cough, no, none of those things. So anyway. So let's start with judgment. We're going to put that in the center here. Um, it's interesting because it's a two energy. It's the 20th card of the major arcana. We also have the two of cups and we have a six. So we're dealing with even numbers here. We're also dealing with... Uh, uh, balanced energy exchange with others as well, really. Um, but let's start with judgment. I don't, I, I don't, I don't like the E in this. It, so my husband doesn't write out grocery lists anymore because I edit for smelling. <laughs> I don't know why I do that, <laughs> but I do. So it's like, well, you, you write out, you write it out. 
if it was in sentences, I would be editing it for, for grammar and punctuation too. So there you go. <laughs> anyway, here we have the folks. They're they're jumping out out of their their co their uh, coffins. I almost said cauldron. <laughs> As Angel Gabriel blows his horn up above, we see the cross, which is not a religious cross. And we'll talk about that here in a second. But it's thought to be the last judgment, you know, where where when you die and 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 your your soul goes on, it goes through the whole life review and and all of that. Um, sure, it, I'm sure it does that. Uh, uh, but here's the thing. I'm going to draw this cross out. This is not a religious cross. It's not a medical cross. It's the, it's basically the path we take when focusing into form. At least that's how I see this. And so if you are a total ego-driven person, you're going to be down there at the bottom. The horizontal line is the abyss where we make the choices We've made the choices of who we're going to be, what, what gender we're going to be, what our life theme is going to be. And then we take that leap as the fool with complete trust in, in perfect love and perfect trust, right? And we're going to take the leap through the veil and we're going to come through the abyss and we're going to come down into form and, and create these bodies and focus our soul into the body. So if we choose to be somewhat unaware uh, or if that's just what happens, I don't know, uh, then we might forget that we're the soul at all times. And we might just see ourselves as human beings and as the body, and that's all we see ourselves as. We don't understand the energy that makes all of that possible. We think that somehow it's over there, we've got to do good works and work our way back. And then at the time of judgment, when you when the body dies and you and the soul releases and then goes on and talks to the oversoul and says, well, geez, how'd I do? You know, let's talk about it. You know, let's talk about what happened. Uh, you know, that's really what this process is here. It's not judgmental. It's not harsh. It's not painful. It's it's just what is. The only time the good or bad of it really comes into play is when we're here. Uh, we can see it for what it is when we're when we're simply the soul viewing it, when we're the higher self viewing it, and it's not a it's not the same type of perceptual experience as it is when we're in the body. So, so ideally, where you want to be <laughs> is likely right up at the line of the abyss in terms of your awareness, and if you're there, then you tend to let spirit inform that process, right? But here. When you're when you're when you're here in the judgment sec section of life, uh, or the experience of this, then where you are is you're outside of that cross. You're outside of it, and so you're or you know you're you haven't recommitted to go back in yet, and so you're outside that whole experience, that cross experience of where we're going to we're going to focus into form and become who we are, at least temporarily, because who we are is not this body. Who we are is not the, the personality. Who we are is the soul within. So, you know, even if you don't understand that until the body dies and you're like, oh, yeah, right, I was a soul and I forgot about that. You know, maybe that was what the experience was supposed to be about. Maybe you were supposed to try to learn uh, try to try to navigate through life without the soul awareness, you know, and learn what that's all about. That said, what we need to learn, <laughs> at least in terms of this experience, is to drop resistance with one another and heal the differences in the wounds that have been imposed by someone else. You can see the man reaching out his hand to the woman. You see the line of demarcation behind them between them and their and their life, basically. They need to heal a few things in order to get back to the life that we all share together. We see the winged lion above, representing elemental fire, even though this is a, the card of uh, uh, elemental water and the cups and the suit of cups, that's elemental water in our emotions. But you see up there the healing that's taking place. You see the caduceus. 
and you see them reach forth their emotions in offering of love and reciprocity and balanced energy exchange with each other. It can also mean the, the work you do that, that, that balances the same within. Because if we're all expressions of source energy, then everyone that we see is the other side of self. And is all here to help us grow and develop and learn and to bounce things off of, basically, to see what another is going through, knowing that that's the other side of self. It's the other side of us. So what they're going through, we're going through, without having to actually <laughs> do that, right? We can learn from their, from their experiences. A lot of that's going on online right now, learning from people's experiences of what it's like to go through the COVID virus and, 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 and come out on the other side, obviously, of it, uh, what that was like for them, especially if they did it on their own without a hospital or anything. They didn't have to do that. They did it at home. What was that like? People are wanting to know, how did you do it? How did that go for you? It doesn't, it doesn't happen the same for everybody, although there's some consistency, certainly, but the milder forms of this, if it just hits you in a mild way, you're gonna, it's going to be different for you. You might have pieces of it, but you might not have everything. So it's interesting to listen to how people coped with it and what it was like for them, how long it took. Uh, I realize, you know, it's always it's going to be different for everybody. But just knowing how someone got through it is helpful. And so, you know, I, I would recommend people continue to share that online about how you've struggled and how you've gotten through it and what you did. And, you know, if you're not sick, how are you, how are you getting through the day? You know, if you, you know, people with little kids, you want to probably band together and figure out how are y'all doing it? Uh, you know, people at homeschool aren't going to have any problem because <laughs> they're already doing it. You know, we homeschooled after a point and, uh, you know, I, and I love it. It's like, it's like, oh my God, kids are going to be so far behind after this year. No, they're not. No, they're not. <clears throat> Homeschooling isn't what you think, and learning isn't what you think. And uh, a lot of the stuff, you know, the kids can get what they need done in a very short amount of time in the daytime. Uh, my, my, my youngest used to do his math in the middle of the night and his PJs in his bed. Uh, so, no, kids will learn. Kids want to learn. Um they don't need to learn in the way that schools want them to learn. And so uh, as long as you can, uh, I don't know, we had, and we had a college focus and we did unschooling. So there were certain things that we, that they had to know. And so I made sure they knew them. I retook writing 121 and I gave them everything from writing 121 for their writing. Uh, uh, and, and so when they got to college, you know, they, they did extraordinarily well. Um, but, but the point is, is it, it was funny. It's like, oh, they're every, the kids are going to be so far behind. It's going to be a terrible impact. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. So trust your children. They want to learn and they're going to learn. Uh, they're very, very motivated. You have really no idea. It's not about leading children to learning. Children are going to lead you. We were out, out and about, the kids were older. They could be by themselves. And, and we had to go to, we had to go to, to the next town over, go shopping for something. And we were on our way back and we get a phone call on the cell phone saying, can you stop at, 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 at the bookstore and, and get us everything on the eye? I said, why? He says, because the dog, the ball hit the dog in the, in the eye. And, and we called the vet and cause he won't open his eye. And, and we called the vet and we, we, we don't have enough on the eye. So, so I had to stop and, you know, get them some more stuff on the function of the eye and so they would feel better. He was fine, you know, but this is what I'm talking about. Your kids are going to be fine. They're going to, and, and I mean, they're with you. So, you know, you're going to get a chance to watch your kids learn and be involved in that. And I'm going to tell you, there was nothing better than that. There really wasn't. Best time ever was when they were with us. It was just the best time ever. So in any event, let's go back to the reading and get out of the homeschool thing. But I, I, I'm a homeschool mom. So anyway, my kids are in their late 30s, though. So this has been a long time ago that we did this. In the 90s is what it was. But uh, anyway, um, here we have the six of uh, wands. 
And you can see the the he might be the king, just not wearing a crown at the moment. Uh, but he's coming back from something, maybe battle, maybe a meeting. I don't know. Uh, but he's coming back, and it's and you can see the the wreath on the uh, attached to the wand or to the staff. And uh, uh, I mean, wands for me are something else, right? I I, I don't know. But anyway, the, but Rider Wade always uses staffs, and so anyhow. Uh, You've got that. You've got the wreath up there attached to the staff, and so he's and he's also wearing one on his head. So something positive has happened. Okay, something a new way has opened, and we're all moving forward in shared purpose. Everybody's moving in the same direction as him. You see all this support around him with the wands held high. Nobody's trying to hit one another with them. In other words, and so so basically, we're moving forward in shared purpose together. The six is about is about that. It's about a different level of awareness with the two. We have the awareness of reciprocity with another person or the balance within. But we start to look without him, and it also applies to to one other person, basically, that that exchange we have with others. It can also, a two can also mean decisions. It can also, it can mean all kinds of things, duality, polarity. But but right now, it's about coming back into, uh, into healing with someone else. And so you're healing the divisions within. And that's the message of judgment that this path we've been on of separation is not going to help us right now. And you're going to find that when you go through this with others that maybe you've been at odds with, you're going to find that there was no reason for being that really mattered anyway. Because when it's life or death, suddenly that stuff just doesn't matter anymore. It's save your neighbor because maybe they're going to save you. And didn't we talk a little bit about that in the astrology this morning here when we just got started? Uh, let's see, what was it? Oh, yeah, in the moon sextile Venus express gratitude to others today, opposite Saturn. Uh, you could have frustration with others, but maybe it's because there's not any reciprocity going. So express the gratitude. Say thank you. Say I appreciate everything you're doing to make this as good an experience as it can be you know, or as least bad as it could be. And so that's the point. We come to realization with judgment. We come to an understanding of what the truth is, of what this was really supposed to be all about. And it's about healing, reciprocity, and shared purpose with others. Collectively, we have one energy, I think. Yeah, six and four is ten. And ten reduces to one. So we have the energy of new beginnings. We can turn a page here. We can come back together in shared purpose. We can come back in in in, in healing with one another. Uh, we can come back and help one another and understand that any differences have been have been imagined. Any differences that matter have been imagined and put there by someone else, fostered by someone else, predicated by someone else. Particularly if it's family, come back together now. We have Perthro. I forget which one this is, 14th. Okay, 14th rune of the Elder Futhark. So we're talking a five energy of change Perthro is thought to be the cup from which dice or runes are tossed. So this is all about chance. It was originally thought to be the the uh, controlled by the Norns, so the Norns controlled men's fate. But any controlling was likely due to cause and effect. Uh, that's the thing about fate, you know, Fate is what we make it to be sometimes, sometimes not. Sometimes there's an overarching theme that we all agree to and, you know, it's going to happen irrespective of what we do. Um, That's a soul-based experience, by the way, and uh, one that people enter into. You see these massive, you know, deaths that happen like through, you know, disasters and whatnot. And you see a whole bunch of people die like with tsunamis and things like that. That's something that's agreed on ahead of time. You don't have to worry about them. They did it lovingly. They did it gratefully. They did it joyfully. 
uh, and they're fine. They, they, they did their purpose. It was their purpose for being here. Now, they, they, they didn't know that until, you know, they were out of the body, but perhaps, but that's when things like that happen, they happen for a reason. It's collective in nature. It's decided beforehand. And it's there to raise consciousness and awareness. We're always given at any moment the ability to, to live in love or to live in fear, to live in unity or to live in separation. And I don't know about you, but right now, my money's on the unity, right? Not the separation. So, Perth Row, again, is about fate. And what we're going to make of it here, I think that in this 22 year, uh, in fact, you could even look at this as 22. Instead of two and two, you can look at 20 and then two and leave it as a master number. The 22, which is, is in, synchrony, in synchronicity <laughs> with the year. We have a 22 energy for, for 2020. And that's a soul level number. That's master number. It's the it's a cosmic builder. It's the most powerful number we have. And basically what we're doing here is we're aligning polarities and we're creating something profound. We've been on the wrong path in terms of patriarchy, in terms of the differences, in terms of wealth distri distribution. Uh, it's all based on oppression of people less fortunate than those with, you know, billions and trillions of dollars. Uh, all of that corrupts. All of that creates a, a strange uh, expression of power that doesn't serve anyone. Uh, it keeps people at odds with one another. Uh, it, and, and it basically keeps us on the level of separation and ego and reaction. And we're not allowing spirit to inform the process so that we understand that all of that is an illusion. It's the illusion that we're expected to buy into so that those that are rich and powerful can remain rich and powerful. But this year, when we're going through this virus, uh, this is something where we have to learn that, that the economy is not more important than the lives of people because without them, you don't have one. And you can't serve the economy and ignore the people. And that's what's happening right now. And it's the, the on the level of the states, in other words, on the level of the people, that we're understanding that. And that whatever illusion we've been operating under all of this time, that's gotten worse in the last couple, two, three, four years, right? It's intensified. That separation and division, the emphasis toward that, keeping everybody at each other's throats. It's so they is so that the powers that be can continue on being the powers that be. Nothing changed. It just got worse this this go around. The promise of it all changing was a lie. Some of us knew that. That's why we didn't vote for him. But those that did didn't didn't realize it, didn't understand. Because he was good at conning. He spoke to what they believed. But again, Perthrow was involved. He's trying to control the fate of mankind, of humankind, of humanity. But he's not qualified because he doesn't have an ounce of empathy to him. He has no ability to understand the value and worth of everybody, only himself. So maybe the Norns need to control this man's fate. Huh? Maybe they need to step in. Maybe that's what's happening. I don't know. But I think that, that, that again, the message of today's reading is that we go forward in shared purpose with one another here. We have to in order to survive. We have to band together to survive from a distance. <laughs> Wearing masks. <laughs> And surgical gloves or whatever, you know, whatever you can do. You know, here's the thing. If you've got dish gloves, you know, for washing dishes, rubber gloves, 
Perfect. So let's take a look at the geomancy room before we close out here. Let's see, we've got a single dot for fire. Oh, well, all right. Yeah, it's carcer, it's a little self-imprisonment, but we know that. We're living within a restriction right now, and we just have to do the best we can. And again, expressing gratitude in your life uh, to those in your life, if they're with you, if they're helping you, if they're living with you, and you're all sort of getting through this together, or if you've got people that are leaving food on your doorstep or 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 whatever, if you're if you don't want if you're if you're over sixty and you don't feel comfortable going out and you have, you know, delivery services coming or neighbors that are providing that service for you. Um, just just say thank you and I love you and, and, and thank you so much for helping me. I mean, you know what to say. I don't need to tell you. We all know how to express gratitude in our lives, even if we don't always do it. But here's Carcer. Listen, I mean, it kind of looks like a little prison, doesn't it? <laughs> to me, it looks like a little cage. The thing about Carcer is it's thought to be evil, and if you if you draw it, then it's too evil to continue. Well, no. <laughs> I can tell you, uh, this is this month's Geomancy, and you start over here. This is the first, first box, and so this will be week one, this will be week two, week three, and week four week four and then down here is the uh, it's, it's the general influences and the outcome so anyway but I just wanted to show you here I gotta do this over here this is this is conjunctio this is joining and here you have you also have uh, uh, poor and puella <clears throat> and uh, so for the first week of the month <clears throat> we're talking about some unstable energy but it's unstable enough that we can loosen the bonds of perception and come back together. Okay. Um, we want to all be here together. And in truth, we are. Uh, if we're all in this collective uh, shared, you know, prison, if you will, uh, this shared safe space, you know, that's the other thing. When you're inside this, you're safe, aren't you? You could think of it, instead of a prison, you could think of it as the Merkaba or the soul vehicle. You could think of it as the shield that you use, that an empath uses to protect herself or himself from the energies around him. You can think of it as the, as the, the, the bubble of light that you put around yourself, uh, the healing bubble of light. Uh, and that's the thing, when you work with that type of energy and you start visualizing those things, you can color it any anything you want to. You know, if you make it a nice pink or a nice green, then you've got some healing energy coming in. If you do that and you want to color it blue, then maybe you do it with the intention of increasing your ability to communicate well with others in a loving way. Add a little pink to it, a little green to it, and you've got some healing going on in terms of communication. So there's lots of things that you can do with visualization. Um, and for me, uh, I would rather turn this around and make it about that. Um, if we're joining together like we are here with Conjunctio uh, in, in the first week of the month, then I think that it's the joining together that creates this collective, this collective experience, this collective, maybe a collective energy. And so we're going to think of Carcer that way right now. So with respect to that and Perthro, though, we have a choice. We can either, again, be stuck at home or we can be safe at home. So I think that perspective matters, and I think especially going forward here, um, there needs to be a countrywide lockdown. India did it. China did it. Why can't we? Instead, we're pussyfooting around, and we're not getting down to business, and we need to. We need to get down to business. We need to get this over with and get through it so that some semblance of normal life can take place. Uh, it may look different for a while. I mean, it may look different for another year or so, simply because we want to be sure that we don't reinfect, right? So it may subside a little. It may come back. Some are suggesting it's going to do this. And so the typical, the way the flu does, you know, 
maybe you'll have some time in the summer there where it's not active, but then in the fall it comes back, right? Or the winter time, it comes, whenever it starts to come back. So, so you have a bigger thing. We might see this. We don't know. And they don't know. You know, they can, they can make some assumptions here, but until we get on the other side of this and we can really see, you know, in retrospect, okay, what happened? Then they can really have some good information. I guess they're starting to look at antibodies and, and taking, taking blood from people that have survived this. And they're doing some studies now where they're injecting it into people that have COVID. So we're going to start to see some things come out. And so let's band together. Let's let's move forward in shared purpose. <clears throat> if we're going to be <clears throat> isolated, then at least let us all be. Let us all go through this together so that we can understand and we can see where maybe somebody needs a little help and we offer it. Even if it's just staying in touch with friends and family. So important right now to make sure that people don't feel alone. When you're our age, trust me, this is a terrifying time. And it takes everything we have to not fall apart, really. So if you're estranged from your folks, from your parents, don't be. Just give them a call and tell them you love them. Tell them that you're worried about them. Tell them whatever you need to tell them, but let them know you love them and that you're and that you care and that their survival matters to you. Because I guarantee you, if your parents can't talk to you or feel like they can't, it's a terrible time right now for them. So we need to stay to, we need to stay together on this forward in shared purpose always after this is over. Trust me. We're going to we're going to work our way back to one another. We will. And the guy in the Oval Office who wants to keep us all apart, well, go away. We don't need that. We just don't. We need we need a government that's going to know when things need to happen. Not say, oh, yeah, well, Noel, well, no, we're going to wait. Or, oh, yeah, I did it. Well, no, he didn't. And it's like, my God, what's wrong with you? So... I guess that's it. Um, I'm going to get this this geomancy reading up here today. The correspondences will also go up. Uh, I don't know. Um, I might do another one of these this weekend. I might not. I've been doing a checking in thing over on, on, on sort of a journal. I started that over on Patreon. So if you want to check that out, that's a paid site. But it's a donation. I don't have any tiers set up. It's just you can donate. Uh, but, there, but you have to be a patron to read it. So I'm sorry about that. Um, I just wanted to do something over there, and uh, uh, so far people are reading it, so that's cool. I really appreciate that. Um, so just kind of what I'm doing during the day and how we're getting through it and, you know, what our process is and just stuff we're doing, just part of life, you know, that's normal, right? I'm talking about that as well. I think it helps to do that, um, and I think it helps when other people read it. Get, maybe it gets them stimulated to do the same thing, sort of chronicle their experiences during this time. I, I think it's going to be uh, amazing when it's all over with. And uh, the things we're going to learn, you know, we, maybe we'll, we won't have learned any other way. So I don't know. Um, I guess come back on Monday. We'll do this all over again. And, uh, uh, you know, hang in there. I'll check in again on Instagram every day, and uh, I've been doing that every day. And uh, so if you want to follow me over there, there's a link below the video to, to get to that. Um, but I guess, you know, come back Monday and, uh, oh, the esoteric influences for next week will also go up. So I have a lot of writing to do. I have to do the bills, too. Oh, my God. Anyway, <laughs> when it rains, it pours, doesn't it? Anyway, um, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for coming by. If you haven't clicked subscribe yet, I'd love you to do that. And again, come back Monday and we'll talk again. So be good to yourself, be good to one another and blessed be.